Good evening and welcome, STSPN viewers, as we are live tonight here worldwide at Glacier Peak High School in Snohomish County, home of the Glacier Peak Grizzlies. We've got boys basketball to bring you here tonight and looking forward to this one. A solid matchup in a crossover matchup that features the Shortcrest Scots at 3-1 and one and 3-2 and two overall. They are in Wesco 3A and against the Glacier Peak Grizzlies. They have not played a conference game but 5-0 and overall as these boys' teams get set to go. A presenting sponsor is Les Schwab Tires, also involved in the advertising at Adrenaline Fundraising, American Family Insurance, Bickford Ford, Grit Handcrafted Wood, Home Comfort Alliance, Les Schwab Tires, of course, all through the broadcast, McDaniel's Do It Best Hardware, Monster Energy Drink, U.S. Military, and Washington Officials Association. So they're getting ready and announcing the starting lineups out there for tonight's game between Shorecrest and Glacier Peak. Let's take a look at the Shorecrest Scots. Their head coach is Eddie George. First of all, starting as a junior 6'1 guard, that is Robel Binium. Also starting as a guard, shooting guard, a sophomore, 5'10", Braden Fisher. 6'4 forward, junior, and it is junior Kagarabi. Starting as a 6'6", small forward, a senior, Derek Usatalo. And also starting as a center, a junior, 6'5", Devin Jones. So that's Biniam, Fisher, Kagarabi, Usatalo, and Jones starting for Eddie George. Now looking at the other team as they will be over on the left side coming out on the, the uh, court. That is the Glacier Peak Grizzlies. Their head coach is Ryan Hunter. Their starting lineup starts with a really good one. That's Joe Lee averaging about 30 points per game. 6'2", junior wing player. Also starting a 6'2", senior wing, Samuel Waldo. Starting as a 5'11", sophomore guard, Reed Nagel. Also a 6'4", freshman wing, that's Zach Albright. And Jace Nelson rounds up the lineup. He is a 6'3", junior wing. So you've got Lee, Waldo, Nagel, Albright, and also Nelson starting for the Glacier Peak Grizzlies. We'll take a break right now and then have action coming up here from Glacier Peak High School on STSPN.com. Dylan Clark, Jeff Cleary, Brandon Corsi. Well, great to have you with us on ESP, STSPN.com. Mark Ockett along with Todd Elvig and Sarah Elvig. Officials for tonight's game, Peyton Kelly, Michael McFadden, and also Jeff Armstrong as they'll be taking care of things down on the court. Just a few days from Christmas, uh, a week just around the corner. And uh, so we get a chance to come out and do some basketball tonight. You've got more coming up throughout the week, Todd. So uh, plenty of coverage here on STSPN.com. Again, it is the Shorecrest Scots against the Glacier Peak Grizzlies as those two teams uh, cross over from 3A to 4A for Glacier Peak. Glacier Peak in their white uniforms. They have uh, silver numbers and letters with black trim. Shorecrest in uh, blue uniforms with gold numbers and trim and letters as well. So here we go. 
Watch out for Joe Lee out there. He averages about 30 points a game. He is a good one, and Glacier Peak off to that 5-0 start. They got to like Shorecrest, too, going 3-1 and one in conference play and 3-2 and two overall. They are tied for second place in Wesco 3A. Drive in, he had some steps in there to didn't, – didn't travel, but he had some good steps to get into the lane with the ball, but it's going to be knocked out of bounds, and it will be Shorecrest basketball. Just underway here on stspn.com. Shorecrest trying to break through with something right here. Good defense down low by Glacier Peak. And Shorecrest nearly has it, and that's going to be the shot clock violation. So first turnover of the game. Last game we got to do was Mike Lado and I last Monday. We were just across the valley over at Snohomish High School and doing the Snohomish-Monroe game. Snohomish with a big win in that one. Still the early part of the season. The conference play really gets cooking for Wesco 4A as we move into the new year. Missed shot. Here comes Shorecrest out of backcourt. They seem to be wanting to work inside quite a bit so far. And the man-to-man defense of Glacier Peak holding them off. Got a grabbing foul down low on the baseline. Just a little over a minute into the first quarter here tonight. Fouls on Reed Nagel. That's his first foul. First team foul. Shortcrest will simply inbound. Both teams not finding a way to get on the scoreboard as of yet. Snohomish is where the uh, town that both teams are, or where the uh, Glacier Peak is in, as well as the Snohomish Panthers. Miss on the basket right there, and here comes Snoh- uh, Glacier Peak out of backcourt. Driving to the baseline. Dot shot, holds up on it. Kicks off to the left side. There's Joe Lee. He can do a lot in many ways for you offensively. So we'll see how much of the game he tries to take. There's part of it right there. That's three points. Three points to get it, make a three to nothing lead. Glacier Peak, first team to get on the scoreboard here. Now almost two minutes into the first quarter mission for Glacier Peak and gets the board as the Scots go the other direction. Chance to tie or take the lead here. Knocked away. Good defense right there. Quick hand. Jolie ends up with it, but it was the hand of Reed Nagel that caused that ball to come loose. Lee now one for three in shooting as that one comes out of there and Shortcrest gets the rebound. Braden Fisher slowly moving it out of backcourt. Picked up at half court by Reed Nagel. Well, that's going to go against Shorecrest. Derek Yusitalo called for the foul. His first, first team foul. No field goals as of yet for the Shorecrest Scots or the Highlanders. Part of the Shorecrest Shoreline School District with Shorecrest and Shorewood in there. Play at Shoreline Stadium. See that from... I-5, miss on the shot and getting the rebound once again is Derek Isitalo. He's in there on the midsize in the middle of the lane and uh, trying to do whatever he can to keep Glacier Peak from coming in. Same with that gentleman right there. That is Devin Jones. Zach Albright is called for the foul. That is his first foul, third team foul. So Glacier Peak starting to get up there now. 4.13 to go in the first quarter. At the foul line is Devin Jones. Second trip to the line for Shorecrest. They're now one for three from the line. Looking at the information as to these teams class-wise, Shorecrest is young. They've got two seniors, five juniors, three sophomores, one freshman on the roster for a total of 11. Glacier Peak calling up three players. From junior varsity, those would be Aaron Thomas, Jack Taylor, and Jake Doman. Good shot off by Shorecrest. Plenty of time out there and a big miss. Good rebound by Devin Jones as Shorecrest will come out of backcourt. Down by one. 
Two foul shots. They account for all their points so far. Drive in, step in move. That was sweet looking by Devin Jones. And he now gives Shortcrest their first lead of the game. 4-3, Scott's on top. First quarter action here at Glacier Peak. Yeah, that JV game seemed to go on forever and forced us to start a little bit late. Mm, rimming out of there. Shortcrest ends up with it again. They're leading the rebounding battle. 6-4 to four so far here in the early going. That is a beautiful stroke. Three-point basket for Junior Kagarabi. 7-3 now. Shortcrest down three to nothing early on, and they've scored seven straight points with the two free throws, a field goal, and a three-point field goal. Tough defense again by Shortcrest. Down low by Devin Jones as he keeps Glacier Peak out. 2.44 to go in the first quarter. Nice touch. Reed Nagel. Oh, finally, Shortcrest sees uh, Glacier Peak get another one, but it's been a while since Joe Lee. Got that early three-point basket thrown away. Fourth turnover for Shortcrest. Lee trying to get his teammate down low. Good passing around there. And we got a whistle. Count the basket. Sam Waldo will get the basket to tie it up. He gets the two points. A chance for a three-point play right here. Foul is on Junior Kagarabi. His first foul, second team foul, and at the line is Sam Waldo, who's trying to make it a three-point play and put Glacier Peak back on top. There it is. So the lead switching hands for the second time. Glacier Peak up 8-7. to seven. The points seem to be at a premium for both teams here in the first quarter, Todd. Nobody really lighting it up. No, that's. I think they're just kind of a uh, little bit Feeling the other team, trying it, to figure out what they're going to, how they're going to. Seems that it. way. That's a soft touch itself by Kagarabi. He's got five points. Nine eight. Shortcrest back on top with 145 to go in the first quarter. Glacier Peak not finding it easy to get inside. Joe Lee with the pull up jumper. Todd, he has not been on as of yet tonight. He hit that first one. But he's missed three in a row. There's another turnover. Five for Shortcrest now down the other direction. There's going to be a foul in there. No doubt about that. There were three players that came down on the Glacier Peak player. Yeah, you watched him just roll over his back. This Italo called for the foul. That is his second foul, third team foul. Glacier Peak will inbound. Each team has three team fouls. 124 to go. First quarter, 9 to 8. Shortcrest by the one point. Their biggest lead has been four at 7 to 3, and the biggest lead for Glacier Peak has been three at 3 to nothing. Lee pops out, trying to find some magic there with his shooting. Misses once again. Good positioning underneath by Waldo, but he couldn't get that second attempt to go in. One minute to go, first quarter, and a 9 8 game between Shorecrest and Glacier Peak. Shorecrest by one. Oh, excellent work off the glass. Alexander Lowe, who has come in as a substitute here in the first quarter for Shorecrest. Three point lead for the Scots. Yes, sir. Hunter is not happy. No. Now, I wouldn't be either, just not able to get the right combinations except for right there. Soft touch by Joe Lee himself. We've had some. Nice finesse on some shots so far. And it's down to a one-point Shorecrest lead with 26 seconds to go in the first quarter here at Glacier Peak High School. I think it's going to take more than Joe Lee and Waldo. I think you're right. It just seems like They're going to Shorecrest have a couple players brought to a list. full team to play here today. It's not going to be easy. It hasn't been so far. And the shot is good. Braden Fisher. Well, now five players have scored for Shorecrest. Three for Glacier Peak, and it's back to a three-point lead. Goes out of bounds. Grizzlies will have the ball. 2.7 seconds to go. First quarter. Jack Thompson now in for Shorecrest. 
Glacier Peak trying to find somebody. There you go. Oops. Yeah. Oh, that would have been a three-point play had it gone in. But no doubt about that foul. Jack Thompson comes in, gets whistled for a foul right away, and it's going to bring two shots for Jace Nelson. Well, I like those shoes right there. Which ones? we got a few varieties out. Yeah, well, we got the bright orange. Yeah, the, ones. Bright, got the lavender ones over there. Oh, that's a miss. Oh, and the bright green on the court there. <laughs> now in for Glacier Peak, number that's uh, the younger guy, Aaron Thomas. Called up from JV. Missed them both. Tough break. Oh. And that's the end of the first quarter. At the end of one, Shortcrest 13, Glacier Peak 10. We'll have second quarter action coming up here from Glacier Peak High School on STSPN.com. There, laddie. Do you have a fallen tree or a forgotten log? Do you have some old wood planks that'll have a story I'd like to tell? Great. They'll mill it, prepare it, and finish the wood for your unique project. Let them take your storied old wood and turn it into a world-class piece of art. Great handcrafted is something that will be treasured for a lifetime. In 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust, the one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family-owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at bickford.net. Live here at Glacier Peak High School, I'm Mark Ockett with Todd Elvig and Sarah Elvig on STSPN.com. Taking a look at the scoring, well, team-wise, Shortcrest leads Glacier Peak 13-10 at the end of the first quarter. Junior Kagarabi is the leading scorer for Shortcrest with five points, two for Braden Fisher, two for Alexander Lowe, one for Derek Usatalo, and also three for Devin Jones. They are two for four from the line. Glacier Peak led in scoring by the five from Joe Lee, three by Sam Waldo, two from Reed Nagel, and they are one for three from the line. So the three-point lead, second biggest of the game for Shortcrest as we begin quarter number two. Now, there are a couple of players that are at football-related activity that part of something they had committed to miss on the shot, Adam Loam and also Isaiah Cuellar-Bell. So they are not available tonight. Thus, the three players called up. And you can see that Glacier Peak is really having to battle with uh, them gone and then also just the job that Shorecrest has been doing. Shorecrest has really worked hard inside like that, trying to make something happen repeatedly and getting the rebounds on the defensive end. They have been able to shut out Glacier Peak from going inside or being effective that way as that's out of bounds last touched by Glacier Peak. Glacier Peak coming in at 5-0, and oh, and we'd like to keep that rolling, but Shorecrest, who's been uh, picking it up here recently with other ideas. Glacier Peak with the basketball. And we'd like to welcome all of our Shorecrest viewers. Yeah, welcome to them. Your team's looking pretty sharp so far. Glacier Peak working the ball around, not finding the combination where they can get a shot off. Now there's Lee. Looks like somebody was pretty close to getting a foul on him when he put that shot up. They end up getting the ball back. We haven't seen anything really fancy from either team so far. They seem to have uh, had to do a lot of work just to get what they got. They have so far the 23 points. Other games tonight, Linwood at Lake Washington. Also Monroe at Cascade, Mount Lake Terrace at Arlington. You've got Jackson at Marysville Pilchuck, Archbishop Murphy at Meadowdale. Stanwood at Anacortes. And we got to stop a play right here trying to figure out exactly what the heck that's all about. You got a presenting sponsor, Les Schwab Tires. I want to also thank Bickford Ford, Mike and Jason Bickford, of uh, providing the coyote that 
brings all this equipment over here. <laughs> that's, that's absolutely correct. Hey, if you know somebody in the audience, like uh, an athletic director, a, well, I don't think Good. He's, probably, he's probably sitting at home watching it on TV. <laughs> what were you going to say? Uh, if you know a parent that's in the audience that's watching, text them and say, hey, first one up there to the broadcast table gets a free T-shirt. Show Lee rolling it in. That was really a good-looking play as he worked the baseline and used the opposite hand to pop it in. Especially if you're a short crisp, because it's probably the only time you're going to be on TV, at least for free. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Otherwise, you might have to use some other system. But here you get commentary and TV and uh, high-end production. Player of the game. Player of the game. Proud parent t-shirt. Parent t-shirt. You just all kinds of inventory. You got all the movers that have to bring this in before the game and take it down afterwards. Aaron Thomas handling the basketball, drives in, saw a seam. Oh, what a great block that was. I don't see that as goaltending. You know, I haven't seen much of that this year. Shorecrest in front court. Working it around once again. Glacier Peak trying to deny them inside in the paint. There's a pull-up jumper just a little bit short. And a battle for the rebound. Get a little intense underneath there. 5.27 to go, second quarter. Shorecrest is going to have control of the ball right here. Hello. They get set to inbound. Oh, she's looking for a shirt. That's what's going on. First parent to come up here. Yeah, you know who she is? No, I don't. I recognize her, but that, I'm not sure. That happens to be uh, Heather Waldo. Oh, okay. Her son uh, is on the Glacier Peak team. Glacier Peak with a really good rebound. Zach Albright coming through, getting the rebound. One-point game, 13-12. to 12. Neither team taken off in this game. That's unfair, though, because her brother's watching it, and I'm sure he texted her right over to get a T-shirt. <laughs> Jolie rolls in, count the basket, and I believe we're going to have a foul shot. He now has nine points. So, yep, he does, nine of the 14. Junior Kagarabi with the foul, his second. First team foul here in the second quarter. Coming in now for Shorecrest will be Robel Binium. And Jolie at the foul line. This is his first attempt from the foul line as Glacier Peaks back on top 14 13. Now 15 13. Lead switching hands for the fourth time. We got a timeout on the floor. Two point lead for Glacier Peak. 4.51 to go. Second quarter. Stay with us. It is a close game. Should be entertaining right to the end on stspn.com. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. Thanks for being with us, stspn.com. Strong gathering of Glacier Peak fans and students across the way. They got a lot of ugly Christmas sweaters on that actually look pretty good, but they're <laughs> spirited over there. Uh, Rory Rosenbaugh is uh, over the AD now here at Glacier Peak, Yep, keeping an eye on things. And uh, the band, lots of fans over on our side, so it's a uh, festive atmosphere. And they have I don't the, think very many people stayed home. No. Good support. And Shorecrest fans over here too to our right. Two point lead for Glacier Peak. And he's trying to see what either team has to. Just got to keep grinding like that. Tough miss. That's out of bounds and it stays with the Scots. Glacier Peak getting on top again. Uh, their biggest lead has been three points at three to nothing. 
And the biggest lead for Shorecrest, four points, seven to three. It's stayed that way for a while. But not much in the form of points overall. We're all nearing the halfway point in this quarter. Glacier Peak has scored five and just no points, actually, for Shorecrest. I think the uh, JV oh, players working hard. That's stolen away. Six turnover for Shorecrest. Out it goes, and they're going to say Grizzlies ball. Yeah, I think he kind of gave him a little shove there at the very end. All five points in this quarter scored by Joe Lee. He also had five in the first quarter. So he averages about 30. He's off to a good start tonight now that he's finally got into a groove. But they talked it over and say that it's going to be short crest ball. I, I think that's a good call. In Wesco 3A, Mount Lake Terrace, Arlington, both 4 0. They have several teams that are sitting at a 3 and 1 record, six of them, in fact. And then at the bottom, there's four that are 0 and 4, including Snohomish. Nearly comes loose. Jones gets a handle. Oh, that's got to be an offensive foul. It is. Way too hard that time. Just put the shoulder down and went into it. First foul on Devin Lee. Second team foul. Eric Isatalo is in now for Shorecrest. Also coming back in for Glacier Peak will be Reed Nagel. This game just doesn't have a great flow to it as these teams just really going with more half-court sets and just kind of trying to grind it inside and not a tremendous amount of success. Success by the defense. Give that plenty of credit for both teams, but uh, not an easy go if you're going inside. That is way up high off the glass. And another rebound for Shorecrest. Yusatello getting the board, and they'll come back out, moving into front court now. Up high, let's see what he does. Some fancy dribbling. Defense strong by the Grizzlies. Well, might as well just shoot it. Had the right idea just off the mark some. Chase Nelson, looking impressive with the defense on that sequence too, and that's not the first time in this game that he has uh, set his feet and got things to go the other direction in the Grizzlies' favor. Under three minutes to go in the second quarter. 15-13 still. Jolie long range. There it is. With the left hand. He's uh, really strong with that. Had that layup earlier. Crossing through, went right, then left. Got it in. 18-13. Glacier Peak with their biggest lead at five points now. 2.30 to go. Second quarter at Glacier Peak High School. Mark Ockett, Todd Elvig, and Sarah Elvig bringing you the action on STSPN.com. There are plenty of uh, white shirts underneath there for that rebound. Oh. He took that in too hard. It looks like we're going to have a timeout called. Timeout has been called by Shorecrest. 2.09 to go here in the second quarter as they use uh, their second timeout. And it now is 18-13. We'll be back with more. Stay tuned. For 45 years, Snohomish County homeowners have relied on Home Comfort Alliance for heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical because of their award-winning customer service. Thousands of reviews reference Home Comfort Alliance as professional, knowledgeable, efficient, and technicians who are courteous, and they take the time to explain things. For all your home comfort systems, call 1-833-COMFORT and make your life more comfortable with Home Comfort Alliance. Thanks for having us with you on this Monday night worldwide on STSPN.com. Very competitive game at Glacier Peak tonight. The Grizzlies lead 18-13, coming up on two minutes to go in the second quarter. They were down 13-10 to Shorecrest at the end of the first quarter. Shorecrest really hasn't well, done I much think outside. Been an extra step there. Shorecrest was just one three-pointer, and they keep working on going inside. There's an oh. outside shot, air ball. Guy in the right position. That's Reed Nagel. Glacier Peak with a chance to open this one up. Sitting on their biggest lead 
at five points, 18-13. I think those JV players are going to have to play off the hook if they want to beat Shortcrest. Yeah, that's true. That's going to be thrown out of bounds. Shortcrest will have the basketball. And Hunter's looking at him like, you can't do that against Shortcrest. Yeah, he is not a happy man down there. Has not been throughout this first half. Shortcrest, again, way up high. It was interesting to see him put that three-pointer up because we just haven't seen that much of an approach towards it. Again, trying to go inside, pull up, off the rim, and a strong rebound by Albright. Jolie, look out. That He's guy got 13 is points. He is something. Oh, there's something, too, on the other side. Samuel Waldo, he has six points. That's his first three-pointer. It's 21-13. Oh, I think be some kind of a... An eight-point lead for Glacier Peak and a foul in the other direction. That was going to go against Jace Nelson, his second. Team foul number one. Yeah, Waldo, he's kind of catching fire here. Aaron Thomas will come back in. He replaces Jace Nelson. Doesn't get that one to fall. And there's Albright. Again, he's been just really strong on the boards, especially in the second quarter. Lee's going to get fouled going in. You can see that coming as he tried to make it happen. He, he does a lot of things to make things happen. The foul is going to be on Junior Kagarabi. That's three on Junior. Joe Lee is at the foul line, one for one from the line so far. 13 points off the front. I think the hoop is too close for him. <laughs> not, not in that case. But he had that three-pointer early on, then he went cold, then he started to heat up again. He can't keep going to the floor if he's going to stay healthy for this season. Yeah, that's true. Jacob Venture, Venture is into the game now for Glacier Peak. Jolie misses the first, connects on the second. Nine-point lead. You know, it might be such a thing as the uh, team is probably trying to get used to each other, having those uh, JV players in there. Yeah, that does make a bit of a difference. Although, I tell you, Aaron Thomas, in the time he's been out there, has been a nice floor leader. Well, he wants to move Well, then up. the other the two guys not being there also can affect things. Right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's only 10 on the Glacier Peak roster before the JV call-ups and the two players gone. Uh, they were at nine. So that's not a real deep team, as it turns out, You know, having a lot on your bench. But if you have guys that playing all the time, you only need to go maybe seven or eight deep. Oh, that's a crime got that it robbed. didn't go in. He definitely got robbed. They just haven't been able to really connect on those three pointers. You going to try it again? Yep. That ball seemed to be in slow motion as it went to the basket. Try it again. Got it that time. That's two points. Nice work by Braden Fisher. He did not give up. But you know what's interesting? That's the only two points that Shortcrest scored here in the second quarter. That's it. They were outscored 12 to 2 as Glacier Peak takes a 22 15 lead into the locker room at halftime. We are going to take a break, and it is stspn.com. We'll have the second half coming up after this break. We want to remind, if there's any Shortcrest parents that uh, want to get a proud parent T-shirt, come on over here. The first one over here gets the T-shirt. On, don't be shy. Come with us. The new generation. The next level. Sending it big. Oh, my goodness. In for a good run. Let's go. Come with us to the track, to the trails, to the slopes, to the surf, to the fight, to the race. Look at this. To the 4 a.m. starts. Training harder, pushing further, hitting back hard. <laughs> You better pray for it. I put that thing on you. You have a pray with it. To the 
fans, to the followers, and the haters. Come with us to the blood, to the sweat, and the broken bones. You rehab. We'd never quit. We'd never give up. We take control. To the world titles. To the world's first. The world's best. Come with us. We're just getting started. It's going to be so much fun. I promise you. SWIC is an acronym, and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from another guy and say, you know what, he's got your back. And, you know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting for each other. Wolfpack, this is Witch Doctor, request immediate hot next strike. Here on the team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know him personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else in the boat. I got a brotherhood, and it's a, it's a real brotherhood. And it's a loyal and honest brotherhood, and that, that's what matters. Schwab tires. I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. Five years, Snohomish County homeowners have relied on Home Comfort Alliance for heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical because of their award-winning customer service. Thousands of reviews reference Home Comfort Alliance as professional, knowledgeable, efficient, and technicians who are courteous, and they take the time to explain things. For all your home comfort systems, call 1-833-COMFORT and make your life more comfortable with Home Comfort Alliance. In 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at Bickford.net. 
McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. Searching for meaning in a relentless world. Always connected, but somehow alone. Trapped by illusion. offer another path where the battle to belong begins awakened by a calling united by purpose defined by the cause you fight for it's not about you Where'd you gotta get over there? no one can ever take away you are in this ring. What it means to be among the few, the proud, the Marines. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident backseat driver, but Mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So turn here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires. We're back here at Glacier Peak High School. Thanks for watching on STSPN.com. Mark Ake with Todd Elvig and Sarah Elvig. And right at the half, it is Glacier Peak 22 and Shorecrest 15. So Glacier Peak turned it up in that second quarter after trailing 13 to 10 at the end of the first quarter. So they come through with a solid seven or 12 points. And Shorecrest with just two points. Yeah, I think Shardcrest, they're dangerous, i got to tell you. Um, well, you got to watch it because they like to go inside, and their rebounding has been strong on both ends. But Glacier Peak also 
getting it in gear with their uh, game in the second quarter. And uh, their rebounding certainly was something that uh, helped them in, on the defensive end as it really a situation where Shorecrest was only getting a shot and then Glacier Peak clearing out the middle and getting things done. Now for Shorecrest, they are 3-2 and two overall, 3-1 and one in conference play. They started out the season with a non-conference loss against Ballard down at Ballard High School. That one was 64-28. I do want to get you the scores in this game. Leading score overall is Joe Lee for Glacier Peak. He's got 14. Sam Waldo with six. Also two points for Reed Nagel. So they've had three players score. On the other side, leading scorer for Shorecrest is Junior Kagarabi. He's got five. Braden Fisher with four. Three for Devin Jones. Alexander Lowe with two points. And one point for Derek Yusitalo. So they're spreading it around. Yeah, they are. They've used five players. They're two for four from the line. Glacier Peak, three for six. That's good ball movement. Albright gets his first two points, and it is a nine-point lead at 24-15. Good-looking shot. He was just off the mark. Glacier Peak, which, again, they were getting more of a presence in that second quarter, end up with the ball. Six turnovers for Shorecrest in that first half. I just have Glacier Peak with one. Neither team got to bonus time as far as fouls are concerned. person with the most fouls for Shorecrest is Junior Kagarabi. He's got three of them. Jason Nelson leads Glacier Peak with two. And Glacier Peak in front court, working it around. Lee Fakes now goes, takes a dribble, pops it in. He's got 17 points. That is his third three-pointer. Hit in this game. 27-15 is Glacier Peak pulling away now. And a steal. Stealing two. Reed Nagel. 29-15. I want to give a shout-out to Harvey Field. They've already always been a really big supporter of ours. Yes. Always nice to pass by it as we go into uh, Snohomish. Tapped away. There is another turnover. Good hands by Glacier Peak to cause that turnover. Underneath. Now watch it doesn't get too physical. And there's a little steam coming out of that. Held ball. It's going to be short crest. Possession. Glacier Peak has almost doubled the score up. On Shorecrest. So Shorecrest with that opening season non-conference loss at Boward 64-28. Then they lost at home in a conference game against Stanwood. A close one, 59-55. Shorecrest in front court. Tapped out of bounds. Last touch by the Grizzlies. Then they started their three-game winning streak as they played at Archbishop Murphy and won 45-39. That was on Thursday, December 7th. Then on Monday of last week, they played at Marysville Pilchuck and won 81-52 in a big one. Big win that night for Shorecrest. Nine on the shot clock. Last touch by Shorecrest. That's going to be Grizzlies ball. They adjusted it on the scoreboard. I think they called out a three, which is actually a two. They had 29-15 up there. Now it's 28-15. We'll go ahead and go with that then. 28-15, 5.57 to go here in the third quarter. Slow on the offense right here, looking for players to set up. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Up top, rotating around. Jace Nelson goes underneath. And a smart-looking play right there, finding Albright. He's got four points all in the quarter. 30-15. to It's like a timeout, full timeout called by Shorecrest. 30-15, to Glacier Peak doubling the score. And we'll be back with more right after this timeout. You, too, could have that shirt. <laughs>
Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at bickford.net. We are live at Glacier Peak High School. They've added back that point we were talking about earlier that they took off. It's now 31-15. We think that's the official score. It seemed to be that way because, Todd, that's what you and I both had when it was 29-15. And then suddenly they made it 28-15. Now they've given back after the two-pointer. They put that extra point back up there. 31-15, that's what we're going with. Glacier Peak on top by 16. Fighting hard for that one. Count the basket. Plus one. Strong effort as he's going to go to the foul line. That one goes against Zach Albright, his second foul. First team foul. Heading to the foul line, Devin Jones. One shot. Try to make it a three-point play. There it is. They are now three for five from the foul line. 31-18. Yeah, you know, that scoreboard really needs to be replaced. (laughs) I I mean, I don't know how many times we have to say it. Maybe we can create a levy for it, those scoreboards. Because I was watching it just a second ago, and it sat at 515 for like three or four seconds. Now, here's a thought. Yeah. If they went with a video board, you realize that we have the technology to send replays to the scoreboard. That is amazing. But I do realize that with the uh, force and power and innovation of STSPN.com. 31-18 the score. Shore Chris trying to nibble away at it. Jason Nelson's really played impressively out there tonight. His rebounding and defense, his court presence. Doesn't have any points, but he's been doing a lot of the other type of things a player needs to do to help his team win. There, Like that, there's a rebound. He's had good positioning. Around the horn they go. Talk about rebound. That was a great one. Pulling it down was Albright, but couldn't get it on the follow-up. And Shortcrest now with control coming across. Four minutes exactly to go. This is third quarter action at Glacier Peak High School on STSPN.com. Like the defense, Glacier Peak is thrown out there, really making Shorecrest work hard for those shots. Lee will come out of backcourt. He's playing with 17 points, 24 in his last game. Glacier Peak, nice and patient. Cutting through. Ah, Oh, there's Jace Nelson. Superb. You know, even though he has just a couple of points, he might be a player that we look at for player of the game because he's done those things that that away from the basketball that really helped that team come through. Devin Jones, he now has five in the quarter and eight in the game. He works hard down to the basket. Yeah, 21. You're talking about Nelson? Yeah. Yeah. They've been kind of isolating on him because he's had great court presence throughout this one. Boy, they're putting two guys on Joe Lee now when he gets out there. Foul goes against Robel Binion. First foul. First team foul. Each team with one team foul. 2.53 to go. Third quarter. They should pick up by... 13 points. Their biggest lead has been 16 at 31-15. Well, Lee Shortcrest getting some more points in this quarter. They only had two last quarter, and that was right at the end of the quarter. Braden Fisher connecting with a field goal. A little floor mop up. Jeff Armstrong out there taking care of things. Once again, our officials, Peyton Kelly, Michael McFadden and Jeff Armstrong. Both teams getting plenty of opportunities to score in this game. The the inside shots just haven't been falling as much as they'd like to. 
Uh, Glacier Peak with the basketball. Up by 13 points. Plenty of time on the shot clock to work for something here. Jace Nelson. Says, why not? But loses a handle on it, goes out of bounds, and that is a turnover for Glacier Peak. Glacier Peak hosting Shorecrest tonight, and then the next game for Shorecrest will be non-conference at home on Wednesday against Mount Vernon. That's at Shorecrest High School. I noticed the website's got the other guys on there for streaming, but they oh, should put us on there. Stay away from them, huh? I, I mean, mentioning it. Oh, I didn't mention them. Okay. National conglomerate. That was against uh, Shorecrest. Sam Waldo, excuse me, Glacier Peak with the foul. His first team foul number two. Dare, dare I say Quick a release monopoly. on that one. Yeah. You just can't get those three balls to fall. They only have one. That was by Kagarabi back in the first quarter. Joe Lee taking it in and is grabbed on the way. And well, oh, he, he is that. good at making things happen. It was a grab on that one. I don't think they're going to. Well, let's see here. Yep. Well, you know, they did away with the uh, one and one. Kagarabi with his fourth foul, second team foul. Jolie will inbound, was not considered a shooting foul. There's a shot. It's good. That's automatic in that range with Jolie and the way he can shoot the ball. 35-20, 15-point lead for Glacier Peak with 1.46 to go in the third quarter. Yep. Albright getting a hand on it as that time Devin Jones went for the shot. For Albright, that will be third foul on Albright. Third team foul. And in the foul line is Devin Jones. Jones is two for three from the line. Eight points in the game. Nice follow through. In for Shorecrest now, Jack Thompson. He saw action earlier. Second shot coming up. Great to have you back in the first chair. It's nice to be getting that chance to be in here working for you and the missed shot. Glacier Peak in the front court up by 14 points. Again, you see, Todd, where they're taking plenty of time off the clock running that half-court set where they worked the shot clock down pretty far. Well, he says, I'm going to fire it up there. It was about 10 seconds on the shot clock that time. I think it's only in their favor to be able to do that because with the younger players, they don't want to really run and gun with them. And can't get that rip off. off. That about three or four of those for Shorecrest. Travel has been called. That's against Glacier Peak. It's going to give the ball back to Shorecrest. That's always an interesting call to me because, you know, at what point is it traveling? Are, you know, do you have to roll twice <laughs> or, you know? Yeah, that is always uh, one way as you keep an eye on it going, what are they going to make the call here? A lot of times the player will get tied up for a held ball. That foul is going to go against Devin Jones, his second foul. Third team foul. Each team with three fouls. Jacob Venture is in now for Glacier Peak. He saw action in the first half. Now you look at the clock. It's sitting at 51.8. And it's not they moving. They finally realize they better start the clock. It's like step on the gas. Now down to 49.8. If nothing else, these scoreboards are a big conversation piece. They've been here since the school opened in 2008. I just we've thought about coming in here and disassembling them. <laughs> we, have, we have and forcing them to put new Dactronic scoreboards up in here. Yeah, they they didn't put uh, Bob's scoreboard down in Snohomish. No, they definitely they got the Dactronic have the down there. there. 
Jace Nelson. Oh. Going to be an offensive foul. Three on him. Four on the team. 29.3 seconds to go third quarter. Glacier Peak is up by 14. Their biggest lead has been 16 at 31-15. You'll see Aaron Thomas come back in now. He replaces Jace Nelson. You know, if people want to help us out, talk to your ADs. Tell them, say, listen, uh, we'd like to have uh, them come in and highlight our players. Yep, stspn.com. Talk to your AD. We'll get into more schools that way. Traveling. Big shout out to the Snohomish School District. They are really strong supporters. Yeah, they do a great job. We're happy to be connected with them. Rory Rosenbaugh. And he's loving life. He's, I think he's <laughs> looking at the the retirement. Uh, he's loving it here. He's Yeah, this home sweet home as we have him back. Formerly head football coach here before going to Union High School and having great success down there. Joe Lee takes it in. Yes. Just before the buzzer. So it is 37-21. 15 points for Glacier Peak in that quarter. And at least for Shorecrest, they came up with six as compared to two last quarter. And it is a 16-point lead for Glacier Peak. We'll take a break and come back with the fourth quarter. It's STSPN.com. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. Thanks for being with us. 37-21, STSPN.com. Mark Ockett, Todd Elvig, Sarah Elvig here tonight at Glacier Peak High School. Get you the scorers for three quarters of play. Devin Jones leads Shorecrest with nine. Also, Derek Yusatala with one. Two points for Alexander Lowe. Five for Junior Kagakarabi. And four for Braden Fisher. That's on the Shorecrest side. They went two for three from the line last quarter. Four for seven overall. Leading scorer game-wise for everybody is Joe Lee, 21 points. Sam Waldo with six, four for Reed Nagel, four for Zach Albright, and two for Jace Nelson. That's where we sit starting this quarter. Glacier Peak in the white uniforms, Shorecrest in the blue. Really been Glacier Peak's game since they pulled ahead in that second quarter. Shorecrest led 13-10 to 10 at the end of the first quarter, but they only got two points. In the second quarter, that gets worked around the way you should. It almost it went to the superstructure. The it almost hit the superstructure. It almost hit the superstructure. Chase Nelson gets the ball back. We'll be watching things, looking at our selection of player of the game. In there it goes. That's going to be two shots. Derek. Yusatalo does not believe that's on him, but it is. Third foul on Yusatalo. First team foul here in the quarter. At the foul line will be Sam Waldo. He so far is one for one at the foul line, make it two for two. So a 17 point lead is the biggest now for Glacier Peak in this game. He's got quite a following, too. Next one is good. He's got eight. 18 point lead, 39 to 21. I know the guys over there at Harvey Trucking are watching. That's right. Drive in, gets it to roll. Devin Jones. He's really been a highlight for Shorecrest offensively. 
with 11 points. Did you say warning on the coach? Ooh. The uh, I seen coaches that. for Shorecrest have been pretty vocal. The JV coach, and it sounded like he gave him a warning there just now. The varsity coach. I know they give me a warning. <laughs> have you ever gotten one up here? No. Uh, I've gotten warnings for where I park. <laughs> yes. Uh, you got carte blanche here you, where you're parked tonight. <laughs> you couldn't get any closer to the gym, I don't think. Well, we're we're kind of – we've got kids that went through this program, so. Jolie, again, Mr. Automatic with those type of shots. Just incredible. Torcrass will have the ball after it goes out of bounds. They didn't, they didn't pick those points up or – Oh, there it there is. is. <laughs> 41 23, 18 point lead. Matching Glacier Peak's biggest, 6 20 to go, fourth quarter. We'll get you on how Glacier Peak has done this year. Oh, oh that was fun that to watch. Nice. Braden Fisher with a three pointer, and that's the first three pointer for Shorecrest since the first quarter when Junior Kagarabi hit one. Jolie with her three. Nope. Off the back end. Like that rebound by Devin Jones. Shorecrest feels a little energy right now after that three-pointer. I don't think Glacier Peak can lay off here. Uh, it could come back around quickly. Oh. oh. Sh- foul is before the shot. So if you look at Glacier Peak and what they've done so far, let's see, that foul is going to be on Jolie as first. First team foul. So... Had that game against the Australian team for Glacier Peak a couple weeks ago, Tennyson Woods College, which is actually a high school. They won 78-36. We had fun broadcasting the boys and girls games for that. Yeah, having a big chat with uh, Australians. That was yeah, a lot that of was fun. a lot of fun. And then the next one was on December 1st, and they played against Battleground away down at Battleground High School, won 36 also played down there on the second against the Skyview, 159-47. Beat Bothell on December 7th, 83-57, and then beat Ferndale last Friday up at Ferndale, 68-45. So this is just their second home game of the season. They have not played at home since November 29th. Got to like the hustle right there. Reed Nagelt. Trying to chase it down and gets a hand on it. Don't mind if it's going out of bounds, if they're hustling after it and you still don't get the ball, at least you're putting in the effort to make it happen for the turnover. 15-point lead for Glacier Peak. 41-26 here at Glacier Peak High School. Round the horn they go. That's a good-looking shot. Three points. Junior Kagarabi, that's his second three-pointer. Cuts it to a 12-point lead for Glacier Peak. A couple of three-pointers helping things out for Shorecrest. Glacier Peak in front court. Shorecrest shutting them off, trying to go into the lane. There's Nelson. He gets a three. Oh, that's a tough one right there. As he gets his first three-pointer, and a timeout is called. 30-second timeout. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick time out here on STSPN.com. In 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust, the one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family-owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at bickford.net. We are back here at Glacier Peak. 5.05 to go fourth quarter. we got a proud parent from Shorecrest here whose uh, son played on the junior varsity that just got a T-shirt. Who are providing those T-shirts? Grit. Handcrafted wood. Grit handcrafted wood on board this year. Proud parent sponsor of the Larson Brothers. 
Thank you for those. Also, we'll have the Player of the Game t-shirt, Adrenaline Fundraising. And David's been with us for a long time. David Wright is uh, involved there with uh, leading the charges for Adrenaline Fundraising. Glacier Peak ends up with the basketball. Jace Nelson patiently now slows it down. Lots of time for Glacier Peak to set something up here. A 15-point lead. Their biggest has been 18 points at 39-21. to 21. Nine, now eight on the shot clock. Jolie pops out. Good coverage. Oh, man. He's such a sharpshooter that you thought maybe that might go in. He, he definitely has great awareness of where the basket is, and that is so important. Always know where the basket is, wherever you are on the court. Some players don't always grasp that concept. You know, there's been a few players throughout the uh, years that we've seen and that are just off the hook, and Joe Lee's one of them. Mm-hmm. Reed Nagel with the foul, his second. Second team foul. Make that first team foul. Back to second team foul. There you go. You know, there's no secret to being a good shooter. Everybody knows that the more shots you take, the better you... <laughs> well, the more you practice, right. the more you, you develop understand. your rhythm and your shooting eye and what to aim for. I think it's Kobe said, you know, you, you sit and just make shots all day long. It becomes natural. It does. It becomes instinctive. Braden Fisher connects with the first foul shot. Second one coming up. A little bit short. Fisher having a nice game with eight points. But yeah, repetition, repetition. You know, and the other thing is practicing from different angles. Uh, we talk about liking the mid-range jumper, the fadeaway, the turnaround jumper. There's a lot of out there aside from just pounding it from three-point land. But you got to work at it. Basically, the great players work at every possible condition to know when they get that opportunity, no matter what situation is with somebody up in their face, that they know they can make that shot. Jace Nelson kicks it out. As the clock makes all kinds of noise, and there's a follow-up. Albright. It, it, the buzzer has a tendency to go off randomly here. I think that just ties in with the great workmanship of the scoreboard. Well, I think that uh, that was kind of, I don't, even know what you, I don't even know what you call it, but that buzzer stopped everyone from playing, and the only one that kept playing was the one that made the shot. Reed Nagel called for the foul, his third, third team foul. Yeah, it went off a couple times in the JV game, and just randomly. Want to thank another sponsor, Home Comfort Alliance in Snohomish and King County. Thank you. McDaniels Do It Best Hardware, STM sponsor, STSBN sponsor since 2010. Worked hard for that one, got it done. Devin Jones, an offensive highlight, adding to the others he's had in this game. Leading Shorecrest with 13 points. Falling out, trying to get somebody to pop out and help. Finally, Jace Nelson does. Eight on the shot clock. Coming in, he's almost. Right there for the rebound. Braden Fisher, 2.40 to go. Fourth quarter. Glacier Peak by 14 points. Fancy one-on-one -on -one dribbling right there. Nelson taken doesn't that lose in. him. Albright with the rebound. Glacier Peak can do and continue on with what they have been doing and just slowing the offense down. They've got the 14-point lead, and it's getting closer to two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. These teams, and the, the gym just seemed to kind of flat to start things off. Maybe the length of that JV game, and then everybody had to kind of get oh. uh, Count that baby by Joe Lee. Is it a three, or was he inside the line? I think it was two. Yeah. And he got a foul. Well, the foul is going to be called against Yusatalo. That's his fourth foul, second team foul. It is two points. Jolie now with 25. Who's the next in line there? In scoring? Yeah. 
Uh, wall for Glacier Peak, it would be Sam Waldo with eight. Lee connects on the foul shot. He's got 26. Timeout has been called by Glacier Peak. It's a full timeout, 17-point lead for the Grizzlies. Two minutes exactly to go in the fourth quarter here at Glacier Peak on STSPN.com. SWIC is an acronym, and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from the guy and say, you know what, he's got your back. And, you know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting for each other. Here on the team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know him personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else in the boat. I got a brotherhood and it's a, it's a real brotherhood and it's a loyal and honest brotherhood and that, that's what matters. it is a 17-point lead for Glacier Peak. I'd have to say they've got this one in hand. It'd be a long ways to go for Shortcrest to try to pull this out. Also want to thank Monster Energy Drink, U.S. Military, Washington Officials Association, American Family Insurance, Sally Petty Agency over in Monroe. 135 to go, fourth quarter. Glacier Peak doing right now what they've been doing a lot here in the second half, just taking a lot of time, working for the shot, working the clock down. It's been very effective for them. You know, funny thing about our sponsors, I, I happen to be a client, mm-hmm. and probably you too, of most of those people. That's great. Oh, there's that buzzer going off for some reason. Oh, they're going to say it was a shot clock violation. I don't think that's why the buzzer went off randomly. And then that ended up being the final call. Shortcrest will have the basketball. Working out of backcourt now. Down by 17. Glacier Peak has this one. To go to 6-0. and oh, oh, That's a great looking shot. Braden Fisher coming alive in this quarter with 8 points. 12 in the game. They have two players in double figures. The other one is Devin Jones with 13. You got to well, reset the shot clock to 30 seconds. 14 point lead for the Grizzlies. 50.6 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. In the beginning of Shorecrest, 14, Alexander. Alexander Lowe returning to the lineup for Shorecrest. He will replace Braden Fisher, who's put together a strong fourth quarter and game. Shorecrest keeping pressure on, even though they're down by 14, and Glacier Peak is just going to slowly work it up court. Get it across, get across the timeline. Chase Nelson. There's a foul. No about, doubt about that. He got crunched. See Rory Rosenbaugh down there. The, he's holding the wall up. <laughs> he's a tall call for the foul. That's his fifth. Second team foul. Now in is Jamal Hosen. What number is uh, Sam Waldo? Sam Waldo is number 10. Okay, so you're thinking Joe Lee obviously have an amazing game, but he's already won player of the game at least once this year. Now, that's all you can win in a season, but he's won it a number of times over the years. He's just a junior, too. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? We, we want to spread it around, be able to talk to the different players. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they work really hard, and I think it's really important for any media outlet to yeah. bring those kids up and talk to them and, and make them a little bit of a rock star for five sure. minutes. They enjoy it. They get a T-shirt out of it, give them a chance to get some uh, media exposure. Coming up on 16 seconds to go here in the quarter. Well, they have fouls to give. Whistle blows, stops play. But they don't know They're what they call it. They're not saying anything at this point in time. 
something with the scoreboard, maybe. Well, the scoreboard, I was looking over to our right here, and it was counting down, and the one on the left wasn't moving at all for about four seconds. So I think they got a little confused. How could you not? Five seconds to go. I mean, really. Now there it is, end of the game. Final score, Glacier Peak 49, Shorecrest 35. Glacier Peak coming up with 12 in that quarter as they get the job done. And uh, Shorecrest with 14 in the quarter. Joe Lee, the leading scorer overall with 26 points. Sam Waldo with 8 points. Reed Nagel coming through with 4. 6 for Zach Albright. Chase Nelson with 5 points and a whole lot of other great stuff he did tonight. Also, you got 12 points across the way for Braden Fisher, 8 for Junior Kagarabi, Alexander Lowe with 2 points, 1 for Derek Yusitalo, and 13 points, leading scorer across the way for Shorecrest. That's Devin Jones, who uh, definitely put together a good game, both with his scoring and rebounding. So we're going to get a break here real quick, and then we'll have an interview with our player of the game coming up shortly here on stspn.com. At Glacier Peak High School, 49-35, the final score. Uh, Sam Waldo, you did a great job out there throughout the game, coming up with uh, three points in that first quarter, and then you hit another three-pointer in the second and just kind of balanced the scoring with the eight there. seemed like early on uh, both teams were having a little trouble getting in sync out there. Uh, go back if you could and just share as to what was going on out there. Yeah, so uh, we really uh... – it was kind of we were slow. We we didn't really feel like we we didn't feel like us, especially missing our yeah. two two key components of helping us uh, win our games, uh, with the defensive side and the offensive side. Yeah. But yeah. as a team, we just collectively, as coming into the coming into halftime, we said that we need to pick it up badly, and this is not us at all. We saw that, and also at, at the st- later end of the second quarter, you were starting to feel a little bit. I'm uh, missing a couple players tonight: Adam Lome and also Isaiah Quayar Bell. They had another function they had to be involved in tonight. Yeah. So uh, Aaron Thomas got some playing time. Uh, Joe Lee with another great yeah. night out there, huh? It was crazy, yeah. I mean, as a team, we can't we can't really complain. We we played pretty good as a team, so I'm not going to complain. Yeah, I mean, and what did you think of Shorecrest? They were tough uh, in the early part of the game. Oh yeah, they they definitely they definitely held us to what we wanted to the competition we wanted to play for sure. So yeah, this is, this is great. They came out there and uh, had a game plan, and then you guys just got in the groove and got the job done. So your yep. chemistry was like a little off at the beginning you were just trying to get used to the new guys in the in the uh, lineup yeah yeah definitely that's definitely it. having well, it so like the gym was a little bit uh after the long jv game you guys had to warm them up and then they got going yeah so we did silent night so after the 11 points scored then they go crazy <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's fantastic i like that well thanks a lot for coming up you he, got a t-shirt coming too he does get Let's a picture of that here. on stspn.com as a uh, that is part of the of being player of the game. So there you go. Great job. Here's your hold that Perfect. out there. We'll get a, a picture. Say there's there's mom down there, and uh, and dad. Look at that. You got a cheering section. Yeah, hold that up there. You don't there get you this on just a stream feed. You get this on STS. Yeah, the, the conglomerate doesn't have the, the conglomerate uh, doesn't have like we have here. So that's right. There you go. All right, Sam. Congratulations. Your fam club and family awaits. Perfect. So good job. You guys Thank are you. six to zero now. Yes, sir. Six to zero. So. Thanks, everybody, and thanks to Sam right there. Thank you, guys. Glacier Peak's next game will be against Ingram right here. at. Uh, it's a non-conference game coming up on Thursday of this week. Starts at 7-15, and then they have a game on Friday against Nahomish. That starts, that's also here at Glacier Peak against their Cross Valley rival. Todd, what do you got going on tomorrow night for basketball? Tomorrow night we are, I think we're back here. Yeah, we're back here with the girls, I think. Okay, well, that's great. So you got me off guard. Pardon we, me? We, we, well, there's got... mom with the parent of the game. Yeah, it is her. All right. Sam Waldo's mom is parent of the game. i got to get out of their shot right here. 
I do believe I have tomorrow night's opponent that we can check on as well. Oh, that'll just take me a second here. Let me let me look. I, you caught me off guard. It's okay. We would do be, so many the games first time. that... Uh, Enumclaw, Glacier Peak, yep. girls tomorrow. Enumclaw, Glacier Peak tomorrow, 7.15. And then on Friday, you have a double dipper, and that will be Snohomish at Glacier Peak girls, and that starts at 5.30. And then Snohomish, Glacier Peak boys, that is at 7.15. Steve Willits will have the call on those. That'll be fun. So uh, I'll be back with you on January 2nd and 3rd. So there you go. Have a great Christmas coming up there, Todd. And Happy New Year, unless you uh, pull me in sooner than that. Everybody, thanks a lot. Happy holidays. Mark Hockett for Todd Elvig and Sarah Elvig saying winning is for tonight, but sportsmanship is for a lifetime. Take care. Have a great rest of your evening. Yeah, thank you for your support. Yeah, 49-35, Glacier Peak wins.